this podcast we are going to have a look at how to do the chi-square test and the chi-square test is basically a measure of association so it's a bit like a correlation coefficient but it measures uh, the association between two categorical variables so essentially we use it in situations where we've measured frequency data so the number of times that something occurs now the example in the book is um, an example of whether we can get cats to line dance. In this example, we had two kinds of training. We either gave them food as a reward or we gave them affection as a reward. And the outcome that we measured was whether they would line dance or not. So we've got two categorical variables here. One is uh, whether it's food or affection. And we've got another categorical variable, which is whether they danced or didn't dance. So there's two variables and each one has two categories. And our outcome is really just the, the frequency or the number of cats that fall into each of the various combinations of categories. So in SPSS, there's two ways that you can enter the data. The first way is the long and tedious way. Now, if you have a look at this data uh, file here, this represents the long and tedious way. Now in this particular uh, case, we've got each row in our data editor representing a cat. So for each cat, we have a variable that I've called training, which tells us whether they were trained with food or whether they were trained with affection. And this is just a grouping variable, uh, which as you can see is uh, zero, or if we scroll down a bit, ones further down. So it's just zero or one, zero represents food as a reward and scroll down one represents affection as a reward so that's just a, a categorical coding variable we also have a second variable which I've called dance which represents whether they danced or not you can see I've even put a little caption that tells you um, and this is again a coding variable so it's zero when the cat danced so zero represents yes and you can see down here we've got some ones so these are cats who did not dance so this is the the basic format so each row represents a cat and we've just got these two coding variables which if we look in the variable view the training one we've got codes of uh, zero for food and one for affection and if you have a look at the dance variable we've got uh, kind of similar so zero for yes one for no and these are both nominal variables so we've set them to be nominal over here so that's the first way you can enter the data now we had uh, in this particular piece of uh, invented research 200 cats so we went to the the land of the cats and we trained some of them and we had a look at their dancing so you can see each row represents a cat we've got 200 rows now as you might imagine that takes quite a long time to type in it's a bit boring typing in numbers it's never an awful lot of fun really um, so we can do it much quicker than that actually well you know there's nothing wrong necessarily with doing it like this but it's very tedious so the other way you can do it is the quick way and um, this is where you still you set up your two training uh, sorry your two uh, variables training and dance and we've set them up in exactly the same way so we've got you can see codes of zero and one for training so where zero represents food one represents affection and for the same with dancing we've got a zero representing yes they danced and uh, a one representing no they didn't dance and so these, these variables are set up in exactly the same way as before but instead of 
having 200 rows of data, what we can do is create a variable that represents the frequency or the number of cats that fall into each of these categories. So essentially, we uh, can say, well, in, in this case, when we use food as a reward, 28 cats actually danced and uh, 10 cats did not dance. So this frequency variable just represents the number of cats. So it's, if, you know, if you like, if you think back to the other uh, data file that was just on the screen, this really represents the number of rows that had uh, the combination of zero and zero for those two variables. So there were 28 rows or 28 cats who were trained with uh, food and danced. So this is obviously much quicker. You've only got to put in four rows of data rather than 200. Bingo! So uh, when you put your data in like this, uh, what you basically have to do is tell SPSS that the variable that I've called frequency represents the number of cases. And you do this by going to the data menu, you select weight cases, and then you select weight cases by, and you pop over your frequency variable. So what this tells SPSS is that the frequency variable represents the number of cases or uh, the number of occurrences of things. So having done that, you can then use that data set just as you would use this one, except you haven't had to type in uh, as many um, as many rows of data. So put your data in one of two ways, either the, the long-winded way, if you're particularly enthusiastic about typing numbers, or the short way, uh, if you uh, you know these are the only data you've got and you, you don't you know you just want to sort of put it in really quickly and do your analysis now to do your chi-square test as with uh, any analysis it's in the analyze menu and you can do it through the descriptive statistics menu using the function known as cross tabs okay so if you select cross tabs you get a dialog box like this and essentially what cross tabs does is to produce a frequency table so a table of the the number of cases um, falling into various combinations of, uh, of groups or categories so all we need to do is select type of training and whether they danced or not as being rows or columns of uh, this table that we're going to create this cross tabulation table so we can just drag type of training to be the rows and uh, whether they danced or not, oops, whether they danced or not to be the columns. You can do it either way around. I'm just following how I did it uh, in the book. You don't have to necessarily uh, do it this way around. You can do it the other way around. It won't actually make any difference. Now, a few important things. If you click on cells, uh, asking for standardized residuals is quite useful for interpretation purposes and also asking for expected counts can be quite useful for uh, checking assumptions. Now in the book, I've also asked for row, column and total percentages, but um, to keep things simple, I'm not going to do that now. Also, we can ask for some statistics. Now this is really uh, where, well, this is the heart of what this podcast is about. So we can ask SPSS to do a chi-square test for us. Now again, there are lots of other tests you can do. You can see there's a whole list of tests here um, that measure all sorts of different things. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to go into them in this podcast. Some of them are covered in the book and some of them are not. Um, but essentially, the chi-square test is what this is, what this podcast is all about. So just opt for the chi-square test, click on continue, and then pretty much that's all we need to worry about. We can just click on OK and lo and behold, we'll get an output. Now, the first thing to notice is that we get a cross tabulation table and this table tells us essentially what we already know. It tells us about the raw data. So uh, 28 cats danced when they had food as a reward and 10 didn't dance, but for affection, 48 danced and 114 did not dance. And um, these expected counts, uh, these are important because there are, uh, well, there's an assumption of the chi-square test 
that you should not have uh, expected counts that are too small. And this is, a, uh, or expected frequencies are often called, and basically they should all be greater than five. So that's the thing you're looking for. Are these expected counts all greater than five, which they are in this case, so we know that we don't have any kind of problem. Now, the question is, is, this, is there a significant association between uh, whether a cat dances or not and whether they had food or affection as a reward? And this is revealed in the uh, chi-square tests, which appear below this table. And the main thing we're interested in is this Pearson chi-square uh, statistic at the top. So we get the value of the test statistic, 25.36. It has one degree of freedom, and then this is the significance value, which uh, is 0 0.000. Because that's less than 0 0.05, which is a criterion that we normally use um, to uh, assess significance, we, well, we can see this is a very, very significant effect. So, in other words, there is a significant association between the type of training that you use to train your cats and whether they danced or not. And if you look at the frequencies, it's pretty clear that um, basically more cat, cats tend to dance more if they have food as a reward than if they have affection. So basically, they're not very interested in uh, having affection. They're, they're, all they care about is being fed. And if you own a cat, you'll know that's completely true. That all, all they actually care about is uh, being fed. In fact, I often think that um, if I died, my cat would uh, really not give a damn he would just feast on my entrails and he'd only really get upset about it when he'd finished eating me. Um, so that's the chi-square test in a nutshell and um, yeah, enjoy it for the rest of your life.